Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm here to bring you another round of recent reads. This time I'm talking about science fiction and fantasy. This is a combination of books that I received from publishers, so we have a lot of 2020 releases here, as well as a few books that I picked up on my own. I definitely have some new favorites among these books, as well as some books that didn't work out so well. Before I get started, I do want to do a quick booktuber shout out, and this time I want to shout out Lena from Sufficiently Advanced Lena. And she is an SFF booktuber who reads a lot of fantasy, but also a lot of science fiction, which is why I go to her channel specifically. And she does read some more underhype books, including independently published ones. So if you're looking for some SFF that isn't always talked about on all the other channels, I definitely recommend checking her out. She does a lot of good recommendation videos and just has a lot of fun on camera, does a lot of creative of videos and yeah just cannot recommend her enough so go check her out after watching this. All right going back to my own reading let's start with science fiction and I read No Fact Loss by Essa Hansen which is a book I received from the publisher and this follows a young boy who is enslaved by an alien race however at the beginning of the story his family and his planet are all destroyed he of course is able to escape because he is taken away by a crew that is basically one of those found families in space and so this is considered a space opera and I gotta say the beginning was so good. I was immediately gripped in. It's really powerful, it's really engaging and really terrifying and as someone who reads a lot of science fiction but loves when it creeps into horror, the beginning definitely caught my attention. However, from there this did become more of a standard space opera and I enjoyed it, but it really didn't capture my attention as much as I wanted it to. I thought the characters were good. I did like the diversity that was in this, especially with the aliens. There was a lot of gender fluid aliens and just aliens that were very different from humans in general, which is always something I enjoy seeing. I do struggle with naive main characters, specifically naive children. So I did appreciate that the main character did eventually age up, but at the beginning of the story, he really had a very limited idea of life and the larger universe. And so he definitely had to shed some of those preconceived beliefs and that part was a little bit hard for me to read. Again, that's a more uh, personal preference, but something to keep in mind. Overall, enjoy this one. If you're looking for a just fun space opera, this is one to check out. I really did enjoy the world building actually. It had some really cool beasts and creatures and that was a lot of fun. So I'll let you decide for yourself if that sounds good. But again, if you're a big fan of space opera, this is a new one to check out. Next we have The Crimea Code by Wayne Santos. This is another one that I received from the publisher. And this follows a group of hackers and magical mercenaries that take on a job to track down the duplicates of the virtual construct that hired them. And while this is science fiction, you can probably tell from that synopsis that this is also a piece of fantasy. So it's really sci fantasy. And I will say that your enjoyment of that subgenre will largely affect your enjoyment of this book. And I realized that sci fantasy is not my favorite while I enjoy fantasy, while I enjoy science fiction. When it comes to sci fi, I am a bit of a purist, I'm learning, and I didn't completely love the two coming together. But as a book, this was very entertaining. There's some great diversity in the story. I believe the author himself is of a diverse background. I read conflicting things online as to what his heritage is, so I don't want to speak on that, but I really enjoyed the group of characters. There's a lot of good banter between them. And so if you enjoy kind of heists and hacking and that cyberpunk feel, this was a lot of fun. The cyberpunk aspects were more aesthetic. And again, it has those magical elements in it too. So it's just a very fun, lighthearted adventure story. But if you're in the mood for that, if you're looking for something different, this might be one you want to check out. I definitely thought it was fun and could definitely see why other people would absolutely love it. I appreciated it, but just not my personal taste. I also read Machine by Elizabeth Bear. This is another one I received from the publisher. And this follows a doctor out in space that receives an emergency call that there is a ship that needs help, it's in distress. However, when she and her crew go there, they find that the ship appears to be unmanned and the only person or being on that ship is the artificial intelligence. Now, this is a bit of a space opera, but almost also a mystery with a little bit of a thrill 
thriller aspect to it, although it is slower paced. And I really enjoyed this. So first off, the characters were really good, especially the main character, Dr. Jen. I just found her to be really relatable, really complex and funny. She has a love for coffee, which is always a characteristic that I really enjoy seeing in a character because I am also one of those coffee obsessed people myself. But beyond that, the world building was really well done. I should mention that this is technically the follow-up to another book, Ancestral Nights, but it's really only a companion story, so you can pick up the story here. But it exists in the same universe that involves this space travel technology, but everything you need to know to get into the story is re-explained in this one because I have not personally at this time read the first book, and this one also features new characters. So really, you can treat this as a standalone like I did and completely enjoy the story. I really like the mystery aspects to it. I do enjoy when science fiction books have those mysterious elements. So she gets on the ship and at first you don't know what's going on, you don't know where the people are, and eventually you do start to learn different things and piece by piece it starts to come together and you see the larger picture of what's happening. And like I said, it's a suspenseful book, but it also is slower paced. It is a slower burn. At times I found the hard science to be a little bit dry, but in other instances I found it to be so fascinating. And I really was gripped in for the most part by most of this book. And I'm definitely interested in reading more of Elizabeth Baer's science fiction. I thought this was very well done, complex, and just had that really good balance of a good story, a good mystery, good characters, good world building. I really didn't have much to complain about. I honestly really love this book. I would definitely recommend it. I probably wouldn't make it your first science fiction book, but if you're already reading the genre, this is definitely one to check out. I thought it was, yeah, really unique and very well executed. Finally, for science fiction, I read Moon of the Crusted Snow by Wabash and Rice. This is one I picked up on my own through Scribd. And this is a piece of literary dystopian science fiction that is very light on the science fiction elements. And so what it is, is a very intimate story of a post-apocalyptic event told from the narrow perspective of an indigenous reserve in Northern Canada. So what I mean by that is that we know that there is some kind of event that happened in the larger world, but because the story is completely told from this reservation, we have a very limited perspective. And so we follow people in the community, and at the beginning of the story, they are just going about their normal life, they are hunting, they're interacting with their neighbors, and slowly they notice that the power goes out, their cell phones stop working, then the landlines stop working, and because services in Northern Canada are often very unpredictable. At first, this just seems normal, sadly, and they were just waiting for things to go back to as they were, but soon enough, they realize that there's something larger going on. Eventually, they start to have some contact with people from the outside, so we get hints of what is happening, but again, that is very limited. Now, this book is very short. It's a very tight, focused novel, and it's definitely the kind of novel that I would call a Rachel novel. What I mean by that is that it checks a lot of my personal boxes of what I really like to see. And I really do like a small, concentrated story. I like the fact that it was so short because there was no fat, there was nothing I would cut out of this book. And I also have to say that because of my work, I do get to interact very closely with the Indigenous population of Canada, so this spoke very closely to my heart. And while I am not an Indigenous person myself, the descriptions and my understanding and experience on reservations in Canada, this book really gave a very true and honest experience for any reader who is curious what that life is like. And of course, this is own voices, so I really Really appreciate that internal perspective. There are little bits of indigenous language sprinkled throughout and you get to see the focus on family and community as well as the things that make the life there so complicated. So it was so nuanced. Now in terms of the science fiction, again, this is very subtle. And so in a lot of ways, this does read like a contemporary, more of a contemporary than a lot of the things I recommend on my channel. So if you're looking for a story that is going to give you a lot of information about the post-apocalyptic event, about what happened, what is going on in the world, 
you're gonna find this book frustrating because it is such a small, tight story. And it's really not about what's happening out there, but rather what's happening in the community. If you can't tell, I absolutely love this story. I was so immersed in it, I did not wanna put it down. I flew through it in a very short amount of time and it completely held my attention. And I think if you're looking for a SFF story that is gonna give you insight into Indigenous life, especially here in Canada, this is the absolute best one to check out in my oh so humble opinion. Now switching over to fantasy, I also read The Bone Shard Daughter by Andrea Stewart. This is another one I received from the publisher. This is a story that follows the daughter of an emperor. She was supposed to be the heir to the throne, however she lost her memory and her ability to do the magic and so her father has taken away that privilege. So the story basically follows her trying to get her memory back and also trying to learn how to build constructs which is the magic in this world and that is honestly the coolest part was the magic system which is a hard magic system which are my absolute favorite if you didn't know so I would recommend this book to people who enjoy Brandon Sanderson's books as well as Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett in this world there is a form of necromancy that is being used to create these animal-like constructs that involve taking the bones of different people and building these constructs and I thought that it was very well done. It was certainly creepy given the fact that you're working with bones and it's very precise and almost has an aspect of coding which is why it reminded me a lot of Foundry Side. As for the story itself, I found the perspective of Lynn the most interesting because she was the heiress, but it also follows a few other perspectives that I honestly did not care about. Eventually, the stories do get tied together, but I felt like the actual character work and the larger story weren't as interesting as the magic system. So I appreciate this book. It's a lot of setup and there were some good big revelations towards the end. So again, if you're someone that just loves a hard magic system, if you're looking for a really creative story with some creepy elements, this might be one you wanna try. It was interesting, but honestly didn't quite live up to my expectations. I'm not sure if I'll continue on with the series or not. And finally, yes, I did it. I read The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson, which didn't take me as long as I thought it would. I had a lot of reading time over the last few weeks. Uh, but this, of course, is his epic fantasy series, and it follows multiple perspectives. And it's one of these books that no one ever gives a proper synopsis for. And now that I've read it, I understand why. And that's the fact that this first book is really set up. And so I can tell you that is an epic fantasy told in multiple perspectives with some really cool world building. But I can't tell you a lot else, which is one of my largest complaints. Now, my favorite perspective for those of you that have read this was Kaladin. I thought the idea of someone who comes from a slave life trying to build himself up was the most relatable and most interesting. I really didn't care a lot for the other perspectives, if I'm honest. And again, I really wanted more plot in this story. I can appreciate good setup, but I just did not find myself very interested in what I was reading about. There is a lot of talk about bridges, a lot of talk about hunting, and I just didn't care as much as I wanted to. My favorite aspect of this book was actually the world building because there are some really cool creatures in this world that were like these prehistoric monsters that were built out of stone or are created out of stone at least. And I did think they were really cool. There's some really good drawings throughout this book and I like those aspects. Brandon Sanderson is known for having really good magic systems, but this one did kind of fall short for me. I think compared to something like Mistborn, this one's a little more subtle and you don't really get that info dumps that I actually really like. And so that's a personal preference, but it just didn't capture me the way that I wanted to. So I'll be honest, I'm probably not gonna continue on with this series, but I do have the second book, so I'm tempted to. So I'm going to turn this over to all of you. And for those of you that have read the Stormlight Archive series, I know a lot of you love it. I know everyone is so excited for Rhythm of War, but based off of how I felt about this first one, is it worth continuing on? Should I read Words of Radiance? Again, I might, I have the book. I have a lot of reading time over the holidays. So please let me know if I should keep going or not. But honestly, I was kind of underwhelmed by this, which is disappointing because I honestly thought I'd be holding this book up in my favorites videos for the end of the year, which is, yeah, kind of disappointing. 
So that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Before you go, don't forget to check out Lena's channel. I'm going to have links down below as well as links to Goodreads for all the books I mentioned here. I think this is going to be the last round of 2020 SFF releases that a review before the year is out. So I'd love to hear from all of you. What is the best science fiction or fantasy book that you read that was published this year, 2020? Otherwise, I'd love to hear if you're planning on picking up any of the books I mentioned. And if you're new to my channel, consider subscribing. I read a lot of science fiction, fantasy, as well as horror and thrillers. And if you're already watching this and already subscribed, I encourage you to hit that thumbs up button, hit the notification bell and share this around online. Thank you so much for watching. And as usual, I will talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.